Okay, so let's keep going with 6-3. This is uh, the quiz due tomorrow at the end of the day. And we're covering, just to re re remind one more time, we're covering, this is a TEU and cost per equivalent unit rates, but now with the FIFO method, the steps one and two with FIFO method. So requests for, for particular problems? You had one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see if we can find one. So it's asking for drug materials and conversion costs, uh, TEU or something? Okay. Springfield. Oh. We didn't quite pull one. Let's try and pull one. There's a few of these kinds of problems in the quiz. All right. I think this might have been the one we did like the first day. And it was, so I don't know if we're going to do this one because it has zero beginning whip. It was, do yours have zero beginning whip? No. Okay. Let's see if we can find another Springfield. There's just one in this one. Okay, some similarities to this one? The, the exact one? Okay, great, great. <clears throat> okay, so Springfield Spring Makers Incorporated use process costing, just, just go through the whole thing, is all right? Okay, to determine the cost of inventory. It uses the FIFO method, Springfield does that is. The firm has the following inventory amounts. All right, so we have beginning with physical units. We have units completed in March that I already gave you units completed. Inning whip physical units and inning whip percent complete. And we have current period uh, dollars for direct materials and conversion costs. And I need to find out total equivalent units for direct materials and conversion costs. So to get total equivalent units, In FIFO, that equals units completed minus beginning whip equivalent units plus ending whip equivalent units. We have units completed, 7,500. That's going to be the same. All the physical units are the same between the two, direct materials and conversion costs. It's still only the equivalent units that differ, that, that will ever differ. Uh, so we have units completed. That's given to us, 7,500. Beginning whip equivalent units. All right, we have 400 physical units of beginning whip, and I don't see enough information to to figure out what the equivalent units are for either method, for either either category of cost. If it were just asking for direct materials and I had some rule that said they're added at the beginning of the process, then I could infer that those 400 physical units are 100% complete, therefore it's 400 equivalent units. But as it stands, I don't know this term. I cannot figure out this term with the, the information given. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this one should be a, cannot be determined with from this information kind of problem. All right, we have that last term, we could do it ending with equivalent units for direct materials and conversion costs because we have physical units. We have the percent complete. And if it were weighted average, yeah, let me do this. Save myself typing. All we need is units completed and ending with equivalent units so we could do the problem. <clears throat> that will, that's one of those this is one of those kinds of problems that when it comes to be final time and final exam review quiz time, you'll see the Springfield Springmakers problems and you'll say, oh, some of these are cannot be completed. And if you do not parse this bolded FIFO method versus weighted average method, if you don't parse that right, you'll either try to solve it and you can't or infer the, the wrong equation to use or whatever. I want you to, to be very careful and, and, and know, okay, FIFO method, 
uses a very uses a different, not very different, a different, slightly different TEU equation, and that's going to that's going to determine whether we have sufficient data right here. Okay, what other six dash three kinds of problems do you want to go over? Yeah, Cooper. Okay, so the kind of dumpling kind of problems, as I, I often call them. Yeah. Uh, want me to try to find an open answer one like that, or a multiple choice, I have a preference? No, well, do an open answer one? Okay. So let's see if we can find a dumpling style problem that is, so this, this looks kind of like what you're describing. Does this look good to you? Okay, let's try this kind of question. All right. So any particular sub-question you want to ask, or just go over the problem, you think? Okay, we'll go over the problem. All right, a firm uses the FIFO method for process costing. It has 434 units in beginning WIP inventory at 31% complete with respect to conversion costs. It has 13,004 units during the period. It has 475 units in ending inventory, ending WIP inventory. These units are 46% complete with respect to conversion cost. All direct materials, wind units, oh boy, are added. All direct materials are added. I'll make sure I add that in there. There's another, I can put whip in earlier as well, make sure that's clear. All right, all direct materials are added when units are complete, are 60% complete with respect to conversion costs. Okay, there's just a few, few jumbles of, of typing there. Uh, what are total equivalent units with respect to direct materials? And then round to the nearest unit uh, just, for this, just for this question. Okay, so uh, we can set up our T, a T account with uh, numbers. Uh, we can do it in Excel so we have a record of it. We can look back to it. Let's, I want to set up a T account. So it's a TEU dumpling style problem. Uh, TEU, call it also for direct materials. <clears throat> okay, so we have 434, 434 units in beginning work and process. I'm going to move that over. And they're 31% complete with respect to conversion costs. Right. We have 13,004 units that we started during the period. And 475 units in ending work and process. And they are 46% complete with respect to conversion costs. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do now is make sure that we apply this last sentence. Okay, so once these units reach 60% complete on their conversion costs, uh, the lump sum of 100% of the direct materials are just added to it. That's, that's how we're, we're modeling our process to then determine what the equivalent units are with respect to direct materials. <clears throat> so we can, we don't, you don't have to do this, you can just do this on its own, but this is, this is the, you can do this in your head, but this is what we're doing. We're saying if conversion costs are greater than or equal to 60%, then 100% complete for direct materials, otherwise 0% complete. So if we apply that logic to both of these, reading the conversion costs to determine the direct materials percent complete, they all, both have not met, yet met that threshold. Neither beginning whip or ending whip has met the 60% threshold, so they both have not received any direct materials. At least we're going to assume they haven't. That's the rule we have in this company. And so we're gonna we're gonna treat these as, as if they're zero. And so now we can figure out our TEU. I'm gonna go steal that. We have our TEU equation. Oh, we need to get units completed. Units completed is those it's beginning whip plus the units started minus ending whip. And so TU equal for direct materials equals those units completed. That's this term right here. 
minus beginning whip equivalent units, which is 434 times 0, plus ending whip equivalent units, which is 475 times 0. So it's, it's, it's going to end up just being units completed, because neither the beginning whip or ending whip has, has passed the threshold. And so this term is 0, and this term is 0, ultimately, for direct materials. Is that, does that help? Whatever was that was control. OK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, just, it's just a matter of converting this sentence into, into these two cells, or, or whatever, how, whatever part of your, your problem solving process those two cells equate to. You might, perhaps somebody's like, well, I don't need to write out the cell. I know that the beginning whip hasn't crossed the threshold, so I'm just going to write in or know that the beginning whip equivalent units is 0, and I know that any whip units haven't crossed the threshold, so I know that with respect to direct materials, they're 0 equivalent units because we're multiplied by 0%. If that's, if that's more your, your desire, then you can, you can then take this minus this plus this, or just write in this if you want to shortcut that. I know... When it comes to test taking time, there are, there are desires. There's, it's, uh, there's a, a value in economizing your process. I get that. So you can you can uh, you can approach a number of different ways. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Cooper. Well, good. Uh, good question. You know, what if what if this question asks for conversion costs? All right, so let's let's say what if for conversion costs. Okay. So what we would do is we would follow the same equation. Units completed. We're going to subtract away the beginning with equivalent units, which is those four thirty four physical units times their conversion cost percent complete, which is thirty one percent, compared to direct materials. We figured it was zero percent based on that rule. So that equals zero. But now, with respect to conversion costs, now that we're looking at conversion costs, we are going to use that conversion cost percent complete of 31% and get oh, and get whatever that equals, probably something like 100 something. So we're going to subtract away that, d7 times c7, uh, and then add, like it says, add any web equivalent units, which is 475 times the conversion cost percent complete. Right there. So that would be there our our TEU for conversion cost. So that comes from units completed one hundred thirty-four. Uh, so to, just just to spell out what I was doing, just in the cell here. We've got units completed minus this plus this. Yeah, one of the reasons I like to I like to make sure uh, one of the reasons I like to in the class here chart it as fully out as I can is is it, it'll help show the parallels because there are there's a lot of parallels what we did here and what we did here we just use it we just shift it over and change which percent complete we were using and we'll go back to the theoretical basis for process costing uh, we we say this is that weird and super academic -y term of non-uniform completion of product costs, non-uniform consumption of product costs, product costs. So the idea is a lot of companies find it useful to, to split out direct materials percent complete and conversion cost percent complete, which leads to us having two different total equivalent unit denominators for direct materials versus conversion costs. <clears throat> but if we have it organized well enough, we can see that they're they're almost the same process, just changing out these two cells for these two cells. Good, good, good question, Cooper. OK. What else? What other questions do we want to go over or give me trouble? I'm going to point out where I missed a word in the question, like this one up here, missed a couple and have these two reversed for some reason, are complete 60% with respect to conversion costs. I mean, it's not, I reversed them like I'm writing some sort of poem about FIPO something. Okay, 
So I'm, I'm, I was expect, I'm expecting that 6-3 here and 6-4, uh, we're, we're going to have a level of comfort if we've done well with 6-1 and 6-2, because we're, we're repeating the same, there's, 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 we're repeating some of the same procedures. We just need to know the differences, make sure we've got that down. And so if we did pretty well in 6-1, we've got that, those procedures in our head pretty well. We just have to modify and say, oh, and for FIFO, I change it this way. So I I'm not too surprised if we don't have that many more requests for problems. Okay. It's a very small current period conversion costs. All right, well, just for my, for my sake of completeness, I'm going to go over this problem here. We haven't done a rate problem yet today, just as a way of making sure we got that mental rep in case that comes up today or tomorrow when you're finishing up the quiz, last few attempts. So this one is asking for the direct materials cost per equivalent unit for this month. We use the FIFO method, uh, and it has the rule that all direct materials are added at the beginning of the process. This department has the following data for this month. Oh, and look. I can even forget the rule. I'm not too worried about the rule because the nice professor already provided the total equivalent units denominator. So he already gave me TEU, that's great. All right, so we're gonna do rates problem for direct materials. Our TEU is 5,246. We have 1866, which is beginning whip DM cost. And we have 963178 current period direct materials cost. So if we are on the final and we're digging back in our memory and we're like, well, I know I have to sum these things, don't I? Am I doing something wrong? Ah, shaking head, thank you. We're in FIFO, right? What's the numerator? Just the current period cost, exactly. So we do that instead. We have 183 and 183.60. Okay, so we solved three problems. One was 2.5, two were the open answer, five points. So we should be getting 12 and a half points on this. Let's double check that. Oh, good. <clears throat> okay. Should we put 6 3 away? Okay. I'm available to email uh, if you got a problem between now and the end of the uh, due date. And it's due tomorrow at the end of the day. Okay, well, let's look at some 6 4 stuff, which is next week's quiz. Uh, I'd like to also have just a couple minutes, five minutes of. Uh, maybe some 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 capstone kind of theory of, of process costing here. Uh, the, the meta stuff, like when you use process costing and some of the, <clears throat> some of the mm, potential, potential applications. Okay, so let's look now. This is going to be our 6-3 tab. We'll open a new tab for 6-4 stuff. All right, the 6-4 quiz, just like the 6-2 quiz, is going over step three and some comprehensive stuff. We're going to do step one, two, and three for process costing. And in step three, I tend to ask either what's the ending whip dollar amount or what's the dollar amount for units completed and transferred out. So I'm asking either what's the dollar amount here, ending whip dollar amount, or what's the dollar amount here. And I might say just the direct materials cost here or just the conversion cost, or I might say what's the total cost. So there's already, there are already 
six different types of problems I can ask you without even including transferring costs, which are a little rarer in the test bank, but I have some problems like that. Uh, and then I can do that at various levels of, well, I gave you the rates, or I didn't give you the rates, but I gave you total equipment units, or I didn't give you anything. You've got to do steps one, two, and three to get direct materials and ending whip, or to get conversion costs for units completed and transferred out, and so on and so forth. So there are a variety of problems in 6-4, just like there were in 6-2, but of course, it's now with FIFO. So let's look here. I'll also open up here. So at, when we're at step three in FIFO, uh, down here. When we're at step three in FIFO, It's right here. Okay, so we have step three just to consist of starting with a rate. That's this period's rate. FIFO is particular about that rate means this period's work. And so we're going to multiply it by the equivalent units completed with this period's work, which is units completed minus beginning with equivalent units. This is equivalent units completed with this period's work. Okay, We can extract that from the TEU FIFO equation. Units completed minus beginning whip equivalent units plus ending whip units. Well, that just comes from right here. So we're going to multiply current period rates times this equivalent units that were completed with this period's work, just like I do right here. And we get the amount of, in this case, conversion costs. Conversion costs that we incurred, the number of conversion costs we incurred this period to complete units that were completed. <clears throat> and we make sure we last step, add in the beginning whip cost. So we set them aside at the very beginning. We did not include them in the numerator. We subtracted them out in the denominator when we calculated total equipment units. We kept those beginning whip costs aside and sent them into orbit. At the very last step, they're going to come back and be added in as part of units completed cost. So the units completed cost is this number down here, which is this period's work plus whatever was first in, because it's going to be assumed to be first out. We end up with this right here. All right, so some of the problems. Um, in a minute, I'll go over what I added uh, a, a week or two ago, a couple weeks ago, I think, uh, this, this alternative explanation, the additive method. So this is, this is the subtractive method. That's what, that's what the people in the biz call it, because I'm teaching you to multiply the current period rates by, a, by this figure here, which subtracts away beginning with equivalent to begin with. <clears throat> I'll also do some problems like that. And we'll come back and I'll say, you could also look at it in this additive way. And you might find a textbook that does it that way too. OK, so this one right here. Uh, no. OK, this one. Oh, let's try it. I don't know yet what the right answer is. We'll see if I have enough information. So this one is using the FIFO method. We'll just note that. Of course, everything is in this quiz, but in the final, not every question that looks like this will be using the FIFO method. Some of them will have weighted average here instead. FIFO method, looking for direct materials costs of units completed and transferred out. All right, so looking for direct materials costs of units completed and transferred out. The credit to the WIP inventory account is going to be debited over to the next department's WIP inventory account or to finished goods. And then off to cost of goods sold, hitting the income statement. Okay, we have a rate given to us. Great. Already have step two complete, step one and step two completed. We have direct materials cost per equivalent units. And we have our completed units. Okay, so we have the rate we're going to multiply by equivalent units with this period's work. We have units completed. 
do we have the beginning WIP units? Okay, we have, yeah, 6,000 units, and they're 45% complete with respect to direct materials. Okay, so we have this right here. <clears throat> So let's, let's, let's go to that point. This is direct materials of units completed. Okay, so we have our current period rate. That's D, DM per EU. That's this period's work. Uh, and we have our current, our, our units completed, 50502. Total units completed. Uh, we have 6,000 beginning with physical units, and they are 45% complete with respect to direct materials. So when I say this, if you haven't picked up already, when this is said in the problem, it, it means I have to give you the percent of how complete they were. There's no rule. They're all added at one particular point. They're just added uniformly, and we just observe at the end of the period, oh, these are this far through the process. This is almost always the case, added uniformly for conversion costs. and only on some problems do I do we do this for direct materials. Okay, this is the direct material percent complete. All right, so we have our beginning, excuse me, our units completed, minus beginning with equivalent units, which is 6,000 times 45%. So these are the equivalent units completed with this period's work. Right, because, because we have In the beginning WIP, we have 2,700 equivalent units of work that we carried over from last period. That got last period's rates. Let's keep that separated. Don't wanna, don't wanna mix things. We're like, we're like a five-year-old and our plate, we cannot have mixing of ingredients, of, of, of food. All right, gonna keep, no, 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 no. Last period stuff, that stays back. That's not gonna get mixed in. And so we have to figure out what, what remains, subtracting out that, that beginning with equivalent units. <clears throat> so we're going to multiply that by our rate. And this is our DM cost for units for, yeah, units completed with this period's work. Equivalent units completed. That's the dollar amount. Okay, we'll be tempted to put this answer down. But we won't be tempted actually because I don't ever have, I, I failed. I didn't put that as an answer choice. <sighs> that was a really good opportunity. Next semester, I'll get them. So, <clears throat> so what are we missing? Yeah, no, I didn't. I, I I didn't do it wrong. No, I'm saying I failed setting up the question to have good distractors because this is the wrong answer. It's it's an incomplete answer. We're not we're not done with the process yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we almost right. We didn't add in, we still have to add in the beginning whip costs, but we don't have those anywhere on the problem. Now you might be talking about a step one or step two where we have to do, we have to use this, add in the ending, ending whip. Is that, is, that might be what you're thinking of. That, 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 that is a step that has to be done in step one, but we already got the rate given to us. So, so that was already done. What I'm saying is, we got to this cell right here. We took this period's rate, multiplied it by the equivalent units completed with this period's work, we got right here. That's, that's everything but that first in part that we have to add in, because it was assumed, it's assumed to be first out, which is this beginning whip cost. And I, I don't give it to you. We have 2,700 beginning whip equivalent units I assume they weren't done for free. Oh, that'd be weird. There's some cost associated with them. 
but you don't know what it is. So this one, unfortunately, cannot be determined with this information. Yeah, do you have it? Right, right here. Yeah, I'm taking units completed and subtracting out beginning web equivalent units, which is these two multiplied together. Okay, now if, what if beginning whip cost was $20,000? Beginning whip direct materials cost was $20,000. Ah, then we can solve the problem. Take this period's work plus beginning whip cost of so 20000 Now we have $264,746.24, and that is the direct materials cost of units completed and transferred out. Okay, then we can solve the problem. That, as it is, we can. Okay, now let's look at that. Let's look right here. Let's look at this one right here. So this one, I think we can solve. In fact, there's not an option not to be able to solve it. So this one right here, we can solve, and it also we start with. The rates, great. So this is only step three we have to do. And it's asking for total cost of units completed and transferred out, right? Right there. All right. <clears throat> okay, so this one is, re is, is a total cost of the units completed and transferred out. So we need to Multiply the rates by the equivalent units completed with this period's work. And then we need to add in beginning whip costs. Okay. My my writing up there was not as helpful as it could have been. <clears throat> okay, so we want total, total cost. All right, we have uh, equivalent units and ending whip, beginning whip and ending whip. Oh, here we go, units completed. Look at that. I already gave you the equivalent units in beginning whip. I already made them equivalent for you. All right, so this is step three, total cost problem. I'm gonna call it that, because so much is given to us. Direct materials and conversion costs, we have 75 is our rate. 125 is our rate for conversion costs, these are the rates. We have beginning whip 500 and 450. So that the typical pattern is, I'm, yeah, I, I, I never mind. I was going to say something, but I think I said it already. 12,500 is our units completed. Okay, so we want to multiply, excuse me. We need to multiply these rates by this number here, not by 12,500. The 12,500 includes some work we did last period, the beginning whip. Got to subtract that out and only get the equivalent units completed with this period's work. So this is, we're gonna take to this, we're gonna multiply, we're gonna multiply those two together. And these are So that should be our total cost for units completed right here. Okay, I, I kind of breezed over a couple steps there. But how do we do so far? 
I, I, I'm not quite done yet. I said that wrong. Sheesh. Total cost. No, this is cost of equivalent units completed with this period's work. Whew. Why didn't you guys stop me? I blame you. Okay, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Please don't write that up on my report. Okay. So this rigmarole right here is us taking the rates and multiplying them by units completed, which is 12,500, minus beginning with equivalent units, which is that 500,450. So together, those two, th these two terms together simplify to 12,000 for direct materials times 75, and 12,050 for conversion costs times 125. And we end up with the cost of equivalent units completed with this period's work. Once I complete that, fix that typo. And then we have to add in your step two of step th uh, of this, this kind of problem. We add the beginning with costs. We set it aside at the very beginning of the process, back in step one, send it into orbit, comes back around at the very end of the process to be added in <clears throat> because it was the first in, so it's got to be the first, first out. It has to be completed. First out means completed. Okay, so now we have the total cost of units completed. And is that... equal one of these. It does. Okay. Now again, I failed to properly punish you if you forget to do that like I did. It's not even an option. I think there are some questions that will punish you. I was on my game for some of the questions, okay? But for these ones that I'm not on my game and I don't have as an option, and you're saying, well, what am I doing wrong? You might just be forgetting to add back in beginning with costs. So maybe if, you don't sh if it doesn't show up in the answers, well, have I added back in the beginning with costs? The first in costs, they've gotta be the first out so that they're definitely in units completed. Right here. Uh, because we, we don't want to we don't want to apply the current period rate of like seventy five dollars direct materials per equivalent unit to those beginning whip units that or equivalent units that were completed last period. They already received cost using last period's rate. And so we're keeping them separate. So we're not going to include them as, as part of this period's work, with, which gets this period's rates. Mm, maybe I'm not saying it the right words. Does that, does that, does that click? Or does... Yeah, with weighted average, we don't. With weighted average, we, we, we just, we, we're going to grab those, we're going to grab the, the beginning whip costs and act like they were costs we incurred this period. And they go in the numerator. And the beginning whip equivalent units, act, we act like they were never come, nothing was done with them. And we just take units completed in the denominator. Just units completed. Yep, yep, yep. And then and then at the end of the period, when we're doing step three, we just multiply the rates by units completed. We do not subtract out the beginning whip equivalent units. It's it's the same process. We just multiply there. Don't add back in, and we don't. Uh, don't don't subtract out beginning with equivalents. Don't add in beginning with costs. So with weighted average, it's just this little part right here. With FIFO, we have to subtract out the beginning with equivalent units in this step and add in the beginning with costs. That's the that's the uh, the extra step we have to complete in order to hold those first in beginning with costs separate so they can be the first out in and definitely completed this period. So there's no bleed over into future periods. Of, of this period's rates or last period's rates or this period's rates and so on and so forth. Is that, is that all right? Explanation or? Yeah. Yeah, no, it makes, it makes sense to, it makes sense to ask the question, yeah. That's good. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, Sean. Yep. Uh, some of the questions will look exact or very similar or exactly the same, and they will ask at the end, what is the cost of ending WIP? And you will need that number then for that question. But for this style question, uh, you would ignore that, yeah. It's either to throw you off, or if we remove some of the intentionality from it, uh, I was being lazy, copying over questions. I'm like, well, I've got all the data here. I'll just put, put it all into this other problem, which is going to ask about ending whip or whatever. I, I don't know. I, probably a mix of both. I probably said it's easier to do that, and they'll have to, just, to, to sort out relevant versus irrelevant information, which is a learning objective. It's, it's just assessment. Uh, it's part of the assessment process, yeah. So yeah, the answer is yes. The ending whip equivalent units are irrelevant to this problem. <clears throat> okay, I think this is a good time for me to break out. I think. I think there's no good time for this, but I like to explain it because some people, this clicks really well. They like this a lot. There's a different way to look at it, slightly different way to look at it. So I said, take all your units completed, subtract away the beginning with equivalent units, multiply that by the current period's rate. There's another term that's sometimes used. And if you see this term in a textbook, that means they're explaining this, pro this, this step three using the additive method. <clears throat> this term is units started and completed. So that's only the physical units that we started and completed this period. So So we have 10 units in beginning whip. We have 100 units that we completed, we started this period. And let's just say we have 100 units we completed and 10 in ending whip. And these are 40% complete with respect to whatever we're talking about here. And these are also 40% complete just, just for consistency here. And so what I'm saying in the subtractive method here is you need to take your units completed, subtract away the beginning whip, and multiply rates by that. Take these two. What the additive method is going to say, actually, you need to say, you need to start out, you need to say, well, I only want the units that we started and completed. So I'm going to subtract out the entire beginning whip units. I just want, of the units completed, those units that we, we started this period and completed this period. So not these 10 that, we, that were started last period, whatever they percent complete. I only want the 90 that we both started and finished this, this, this period. And I'm going to multiply that by rate, our current period rates. And then I'm going to look at my beginning whip units. And I'm going to say, well, we had to top them off. So I'm going to add in the top off for those. Basically, one minus beginning whip equivalent units times the rates. That's our top off. That reflects the fact that we had to use this period's work to complete 60% of these 10 units. Okay, we can, and then we can add that in. And then we add in the beginning whip costs from last period which reflects the 40% of those units that were completed last period. People like this method in some ways because it like gets all the pieces in there of what's happening. It's kind of a more complete accounting of what's happening. First of all, uh, with our beginning whip stuff, we can start with the beginning whip costs. We can add in the top off. So first in, our first in were our beginning whip costs. We can we have that. Maybe I think I'm, I'm explaining it backwards the way I explained it before because I think I think conceptually, it stays with the name, first in, first out. Beginning whip costs were the first ones in. Then we finished those units. We topped them off. So whatever we had to do to complete them, in this case, we had four equivalent units. So we had to add six equivalent units to get those 10 complete. So we have 
six equivalent units times whatever the rate is this period. Okay, so that combined is our total cost for beginning whip units. And then we have the rest of the units we completed, which we started and completed this period times by this period's rates. And that's, that's all we're doing. We've got those three kind of classes of costs. People like that method sometimes. They, this, if you see this term, units started and completed, it means they're, they're explaining it using kind of this additive method. I like the subtractive method because it has one fewer step, one less step. It combines the idea of the top off with this period's rates and units started and completed with this period's rates. And just as well, the sum of these two together, well, no, this, these two together right here, is this right here. Just units completed minus the beginning with equivalent units. Just take the 100 units completed, subtract away the four equivalent units that you started with, and you have the 90 and the six, and you have 96 right here times this period's rates. This is the same right here. These two, these two equal each other. So mathematically, it's, it's simplified. I've got 96 times this period's rates instead of 90 times this period's rates plus six times this period's rates. Plus at the end, the beginning of costs, or beginning if you prefer to think of it first in, first out. It has to start with, you can do that if you want. So yeah, if you're, if you're looking up a, an alternative explanation, which is, it's a non-exclusive relationship here, you know. You can, you can Google it if you're curious, or look at a textbook if you still have your management accounting textbook from beginning uh, the intro class, which you all do, of course, framed. Then you might see it explained this way, and that's great. This is how these, what I'm saying and what it's saying map together. And some of you will be like, ah, oh, now I see how it is. Some of you will be like, why do you go through that? Now I'm more confused. Anybody like that? Okay, well then rewind five minutes, erase from your memory what I just said, and just stick with the subtractive method. Because this will get the right answer and has fewer steps. I like it better. Also, I wrote out in more paragraphs in the textbook there what uh, the difference is about. So hopefully, hopefully that will help you. They get the same, the same place in the end. <clears throat> I, think, I think people like this additive method in some place because it, it helps me track what every single unit is doing a little bit better, a little bit more clearly. More power to you. That's great. And that this is what it looks like with the additive method. We have unit started and completed times this period's rates. We get the cost of unit started and completed. We can add in the beginning of cost, and we can add in the top off, which is the cost of beginning of units. We end up with units, total units cost for whatever the cost categories we're talking about. In this case, conversion costs for this section here. This 311,975 is equal to the same thing as with the subtractive method up here. 311,975.81, same one, same number. We just have a couple extra steps, which can be useful to visualize what's happening. That's, that's not bad to have a couple extra steps if that, if that gets you a higher percentage shot, more power to you. Yeah, I want you to have the best shot at getting the right answer. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, we'll have time next week to go over 3-4. Six dash four. I want to go back to chapter three. I don't know something about it. I guess it's just my main, my brain stuck back there. Uh, and I want there to be four quizzes on chapter three. I think, I think we'd get bored. <clears throat> There's time next week to go over more than six on six dash four. And I know you're probably focused on six dash three, but you don't have enough attempts to get the score you want with with the, the six dash three quiz this week. So that's a focus. But I want to make sure I include here because next week. We're going to go over 6-4, and, and frankly, what we'll do with extra time is start talking about Chapter 7 and build up the theory of why variance analysis matters and standard costing. What is this standard costing? Is it like job order costing? Is it like activity-based costing? And the answer is no, actually. The answer is a different question, but we named it very confusingly just to make you your life's horrible. But anyway, we'll talk about that next week, and that's what I want to spend the time if we have extra time besides 6-4 stuff next week. So what I would like to include today is a little discussion of 
why you would use process costing. <clears throat> so we use some phrases. I use them, and I think I explain them in short detail, but I think they're worth elaboration. And I would like to ask you, and I'm open to whatever your answers are, whether or not we should apply process costing to some different situations. So process costing does really well when there's a homogenized and or continuous process. <clears throat> so homogenized meaning every unit that comes across the conveyor belt should be treated exactly the same way. Same process goes we go through for each and every one. Any level of customization begins to attack the fundamental premise of process costing and make it less and less likely that it would be a good solution for your costing system. Uh, less and less likely you should, should accept it. <clears throat> Customization, you get more towards every job is customized. It gets a name, a job name, or an order number. It's going to be important because you're going to track it and make sure you know what all its particular parameters cost you. Then you're in the job order costing and the traditional understanding of activity-based costing space. <clears throat> so what I'd love to do is, 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 for a second here, show you, play around with the camera just for a minute. Oh, wow. Infinite regress here. Um, And, and, and start play around with the focus. So down in the bottom right here, we've got me. I'm put near focus. There, now I'm out of, I'm out of focus now. <clears throat> but if I get a little, this thing a little closer, when am I in focus? Am I in focus at all? Still, the pin is almost in focus. Wow. Let's do it a little further. You can, See, my hand is a little more in focus. Now it's all fuzzy. OK. <clears throat> this is what we're saying. This is why it's named process costing. Where are we putting the focus? Where do we want specificity? And if every unit that comes across the conveyor belt is, let's get out of the twilight zone here for a second. <clears throat> if every unit that comes across the conveyor belt is homogenized in a continuous process, we're going to zoom out, and we don't care about the individual features <clears throat> and details at the product level. We're just going to, well, the process as a whole pumps out this number of uniform, nameless, faceless products that are all the same. Or we're going to treat them as if they're all the same. They should be all the same, homogenized. <clears throat> and so, yeah, I, I, did, I did pull up, I thought it'd be fun, some, some funny police lineup stuff. because I wanted to use this as an analogy. At first I thought it was number three, but I'm sure he was at least six feet tall. And yeah, six, number three is less than six feet, it looks like, based on that line. And then here, oh, look, there's a line up here. We've got dog, dog, uh, person, dog. Number three, please step forward, bare your teeth and growl. I think that should be a pretty easy one to decide. And then of course this one, yeah, now I, I, wonder, I wonder who it's gonna be. <clears throat> so in a police lineup, is differentiating the person pretty important? If we had these in that kind of unfocused look, would it be productive? We had them really out of focus like I was when we had infinite regress and we had really out of, no, it'd be really, it, it, would, it would be bad. You want to be able to discern specific characteristics between, between the people in a police lineup because you know, there's a, there's a law enforcement uh, problem that we might be solving, might be helping, uh, solve a crime. But if they really are all the same, and we are able to discern between, between them at all, then it becomes less, less important. We wouldn't use a police lineup for that, for example. Uh, I'm going to connect that with the other idea here. Ah, OK. <clears throat> Likewise, how many of you have a doctor? Okay, wait. we have a doctor, or, or okay, I, 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 we all have a doctor, or have a place where we would go if we needed a doctor. Maybe that's the emergency room, whatever. You know doctors exist. 
you know, you can go get medical care. All right, so imagine you're with a doctor, emergency room, or your doctor, and the doctor comes up and says, hello, human. I see you're a human. I'm going to give you this human pill because that's what all humans need. Now, how, how, was, how was that? You're going to give that doctor five stars? Is it, is it a no? Thumbs down. Bad Yelp review. Okay, what's wrong with that? Why not? Why not? I, I was. I, I could have gone into medicine and done that. I was, I, that's what I would have done. What's wrong with that? Too general. That's a good way of saying it. Anybody want to be treated like that? Anybody feel insulted when I said it that way? Or would you have felt insulted if that actually happened to you? Okay. I think. I think the answer is yes, whether you admit it or not. I think. I think so, because you're. You're like, no, I'm, I'm an individual. I'm literally the, the center of my own world here. Can you at least act like you understand that? <clears throat> yeah, it's too general. And also, from a medical point of view, uh, yeah, definitely too general. I didn't ask what the symptoms were, why you're here today. You're here for a hangnail or you're here because you had a biopsy come back and it's serious news. Uh, I think the, the prescription of what you would do in response to that, well, this is the other element of it, what you would do in response to those different different diagnoses is different as well. <clears throat> it's not homogenized. Okay, so the key is you want, you want this kind of thing to be, you want to use process costing when you really can get away with stripping away the entire focus and individuality of the product units because you are, you are literally removing something from your line of sight. You are saying, I can be blind to that. And there's a risk to that, you know? But you, if you understand your process well enough and you say, yeah, you know what? We have a pretty homogenized set of products that we're pushing across and we can, we can afford not to see individual difference between, differences between products, then we can use process costing. <clears throat> and you'll save money because you don't have to track as much. You're not, using, you're not spending your, your time and energy uh, your, your accounting time and energy, tracking individual direct materials and conversion costs, you're doing math to decide how much the overall process cost in terms of conversion costs and direct materials and so on and so forth. And that's, that's great, more power to you. And there's a good rebuttal. Some of you might have thought of, maybe you didn't, but if you haven't, here it is. Well, what about, why, why are we letting computers doing the diagnosis now? Because they are. A lot of computers and algorithms are doing medical diagnoses now. And you're like, well, I don't, they don't see us as people. They don't feel my pain. Yet, why are we letting them do that? <clears throat> well, we're letting them do that because we have now reached the point where they have enough data and proper processing capacity. Or, sorry, sorry. If we are using them, we are assuming they have enough data and the proper processing capacity and the proper setup to use that data to get the proper focus on individual differences between, between, between people to properly prescribe the right medical intervention for different diagnoses, to distinguish between different partitions of reality, we call it in economics anyway. Uh, oh, this person, based on this, 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 this set of symptoms and this set of, of, of information about the person, probably has this. This is the course of action we should take given that diagnosis. This person over here, different set of data, should have, uh, probably has this. We should take this course of action. It's, it's not that we're using them because people are faceless and nameless. We're using them because we we believe that we have enough individuation in the algorithm. It can recognize pe the differences well enough that it doesn't offend us and our our egos to be like, oh, okay, I'm not just a human to this algorithm. I'm I'm this very specific kind. It, it can it can see me for what I am. And 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 to a degree, that might be right. I'm not going to endorse or attack the idea of using these algorithms for medical diagnosis. That's not the point of this. <clears throat> but it happens because we have we have created an individuation process well enough. Not because diagnosis is, is homogenized. Medical diagnosis is not homogenized. Medical procedures are not homogenized. Individuals are very different and have different medical needs. Uh, I think that's what I, I want to say about that. That's kind of the, the, the theoretical end cap of 
process costing. We we like I I, I said. Next week, we'll go over variance analysis. I titled the chapter Variance Analysis. It's sometimes it's titled Standard Costing. It's the same thing. Same, the same things are going to be covered, at least. And that might confuse you. if you. That's why I didn't title it Standard Costing. Because you might say, oh, well, it's another type of inventory costing, just like job order costing in Chapter 4, and activity-based costing in Chapter 5, and process costing in Chapter 6. Now we're talking about Standard Costing in Chapter 7. <clears throat> that's, that's not what we're doing. We actually now... Now... At the end of next week, we'll have completed the, the inventory costing section of the class. You'll be experts now of costing out inventory products. Congratulations. And, and so we'll move on to, to some the other pieces of, of cost accounting. And I, was, I started that paragraph or whatever I was saying with a, oh, that's why I, that's why I want to make sure we put a nice, Nice end note there on process costing. So you can discern if you're asked, well, how should we do this? Uh, what kind of costing system should we use, I should say? That's, that's really the key differentiator. How customized is it? Are we willing to be blind to individual differences between products? And, and if the answer is yes, great. Use a process costing system because it's way more efficient. You, and, and, and you just have to set it up once to do these math things, and it will do it for you. Don't, you don't have to do this calculation every single time like in this class yourself. But based on your experience with lots of calculations, hopefully you'll be able to set it up correctly. And one last note, I do want to mention this. Uh, there technically is this other costing method called operation costing or hybrid costing. Operation costing sounds very unique, but because it's also called hybrid costing, I hope that tells you what it is. It's usually a hybrid between some sort of job order and some sort of process costing thing. So for example, that, co that, that company, Dream Chocolate, you know the one I, I haven't given you chocolate from? Yeah, that's the one, that's the one. Um, they have a semi-customized process where they have, people come in and they say, I think, we really, I think I have a market or I have a group of people I want to give chocolates to, 5,000, 10,000 or whatever. Let's mix together a certain kinds of chocolate they'll like and I have a special cover for them like wrapper that I want to put on there and I'll either give to them because they're my group or I'll sell them to or whatever. Okay. So that's what happens. And so that individual job of these 10,000 chocolate bars with this specific wrapper and this specific type of mix is customized, but on the level of the actual chocolate, like chocolate is chocolate is chocolate is chocolate. Like they use the same kind of process for all the chocolate bars. And so that element of it, they can use a process costing system to to homogenize for the homogenous portion of, of their, their process. And they can say, well, add on to that the direct materials and, and any overhead costs associated with designing the wrapper and whatever that, or on a more job order basis. So you can hybridize these to a good degree. You can simplify it by saying, well, we're just going to assume no ending inventory, which means no beginning with inventory, which means the whole process becomes even easier. Lots of, lots of variations you'll see out there in practice and lots of ways to... to uh, to modify this. So yeah, if you're out there and you are either making a decision about costing systems or you are having to make a decision that hinges on what somebody else decided about costing systems, hopefully last few weeks come into play and you're able to pull out something or remind yourself some of the material and say, oh, okay, well, this is why we're doing this. This is what we should, should do now for the current problem or, or question that we have. All right, now, now I'm really done. All right, so we'll come back. Email me about 6-3 if you have questions. We'll come back Tuesday, talk about 6-4, and maybe, uh, probably not Tuesday, but maybe, maybe, uh, Tuesday and or Thursday, start talking about some of the, the theory behind Chapter 7 that we're going to get into the week after.